Racing through the decades, it's time to reset the time machine to the here and now. The Series 2 playoffs live from Mexico City are just a few short weeks away. Welcome to the 2018 Forza Racing Championship Series 2 recap show live from Seattle, Washington. I'm Kate Osborne. Team F4H is holding it down in studio today as they get ready to battle the top teams of Series 2 with some of the most unique challenges yet. It's all about guts and glory as they look to show the world what they can do for the Series 2 playoffs in Mexico City. We'll be talking all about that and more here today, so break out the popcorn. It's a Series 2 recap show. Good to be back with you, North America. Are you ready for this? I know the three of us are. Everyone else in studio. I'm Kate Osborne, alongside me, Ali Tack, and Scott Cole. Cole Trainas. He wants sparkles. and sparkles, of course. Don't, never forget <laughs> about sparkles. You got to have sparkles in it, there. Everyone has to have a little sparkles <laughs> in their life. Um, all right, it's a Wednesday. We are here with you. We're doing things a little bit different than the regular Wednesday showdown. It is a series recap show, and that is because we are on our way to Mexico City, the land of. Tacos. tacos. That's, 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 <laughs> that's that's all apparently, that's all we know about it down there. Is there's there's going to be tacos, tacos and there's going to be some racing. Yeah, lots and lots of racing. We've got all the fastest drivers in the world from the Forza Racing Championship showing up there. And uh, they're going to battle it out for a $75,000 prize pool, which is massive. Not too shabby. Not, Not too shabby, shabby at, all. at all. Well, of course, we are doing it, like I said, a little bit differently today. And that means it's team exhibition style. But don't let that exhibition fool you because we are throwing a lot of different challenges their way, like we saw in the EMEA show earlier today. Oh, yeah, we got four teams here, three races, three vehicles, and you can earn some bonus points out there as well. Yeah, there is going to be the whole race, all the drivers out there in different cars, but also a kind of a race within a race as each driver races against the other drivers in the same car as them. Yeah, so there's going to be three guys in a por uh, four guys in a Porsche. Whoever's the fastest of the Porsches also gets two bonus points. Well said, Scott. Well, well you know, said. I'm here to help he got you there out. in the end. I'm That's here to help you out. Earlier today, that happened to him, and he was so stoked that he added two of those bonus points. There you go. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, to their team as well. Well, of course, we have three very exciting races. We have many ways for you guys to get involved in this as well. But more importantly, let's break it down from the picks and bands. We saw some really interesting situations earlier today with the fact that it threw some strategy off. This is my favorite part, a little esports nerding out. You know, you, you get to ban things, get to pick things, and sure, you just ban the NASCAR, I get it. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, America. Yeah, Ameri yeah, exactly. Just take America. the most American car out there, <laughs> ban it. <laughs> we give them all six cars to choose from the different teams, and the teams can either choose to pick one, so reserve it and make sure it's going to be in the race, or ban it. Just kick it out and never race it at all. That's their choice. They get one each. All right, then oddball vehicles, my favorite category, if you ask me. I love seeing some interesting things on the road. It doesn't matter. Call them unique. Call it the brat, whatever we want to. I love it. I love it. I love that the brat was a brat today. Anyways, <laughs> of course, the Sport GT Icons division, that's going to be in race number three. Very interesting uh, way to set the stage for that race three. You yeah. know, I, I love that last race. Me and too. I love it because it's got tuning, right? You can get in there, you can turn the knobs, you can put a few more degrees of this and that on it. And that makes the car handle in a different way, makes it behave in a different way. Which, which makes for better great. racing. Makes for better racing. Bottom ah. line. Well, well said, gentlemen. <laughs> sure. All right, of course, you can get involved in our show at watch.forza.rc.com. Join us, and this is how. It's the polls, and this is, I know Scott Cole's favorite part of the sure. entire show is opening these polls up, but most importantly, I think they were against you two earlier today, and they went with the Maserati and the EMEA show. I think it's because I said, if you vote for the Maserati, you're dead to me. You did And that's that. how we got the Maserati. <laughs> I, I take the blame. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is definitely a correct answer. I said it on the previous stream. I'm going to say it again. The Lancer Evo 
09 is an awesome car. Uh, the Maserati 4x4 is uh, a, a great way to get your shopping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and after watching <laughs> watching the show at watch.fordsrc.com, you can get involved in the show. Like I said, you can vote, you can uh, earn some rewards, and you can complete those quests. And look what you have a, a chance to win. That would be some serious coinage to have all those in your garage. So go out there, go to that website, and collect all the rewards. It's like Pokemon. And of course, the liveries. We've had a great showing this year in the liveries with the team liveries. But now, uh, one of the rewards here today are these liveries. They're beautiful, aren't they? I mean, just imagine it, the people who make these liveries, people who design them, made them all out of basic shapes, squares and circles. It's so, it's and so much talent. Plugged them all together, incredible amount of talent. Just look at the incredible liveries there. So yeah, you can, you can, you can win those. Lastly, you gotta look good to race good. And the high flyer uh, driver suit right there. I don't know, gentlemen, how comfortable would that be in, the, <laughs> in a cockpit? I'm okay with it. You, you got a leather helmet, you got goggles. Can you I breathe? like a jock strap. Can you breathe? Yeah. Can you breathe? That's all I want to make sure. <laughs> hey, we saw some sure. guys flip over earlier today. You could use a parachute time or two. True enough. Some of them, <laughs> some of them could have used a parachute <laughs> to slow down, to be fair. Uh, it's, it's a nice suit. It's a nice, nice way to drive around. <laughs> It, it might be indeed. Anyways, <laughs> it is time now to discuss which teams are involved in our exhibition races today. Uh, gentlemen, I think it's a good lineup. We saw in the MEA show earlier today some good battles. Yeah, we got some returning for sure. TX3, this time Billy Sue is in the house. <laughs> Topher, uh, an amazing uh, member of that team, does a lot of their paintings. It's going to be interesting to see him get out there and do some racing. Of course, Mr. Jack, that's the TX3 lineup that we're going to see here in North America. F4H, of course, here in the building once again. Sterilizer, uh, Diablo, and Revs. We'll get to meet them again here in a moment. Yep, those three uh, here in the building with us, which is super cool. Yeah. Couch. They've kind of spent all day here today on this couch, and it's really nice to have you guys in studio. We have Diablo, we have Revs, we have Sterilizer, and interesting showing in EMEA. But it's a new show. It's a new day. What did you take from earlier, Diablo? Um, I think we got our, you know, kind of our, I wouldn't say pre-race jitters because we obviously raced. But um, getting here now, um, now that we've already run all the combos once, I think we have a little bit of a leg up for those that are going to be just mm -hmm. joining the broadcast of this because I know the teams have all kind of changed lineup at least a little bit. Um, but we're ripper and ready to go, and I uh, can't wait to get back on track. All right, Rev, so for you, my friend, you're 25th in global standings at this point in time. What can you take from this season that you're not going to bring into the exhibition racing here tonight? Just my momentum. Momentum. I mean, that Keyword. I've had all this season. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to Mexico City. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the confidence is really high right now so i'll yeah. see momentum and confidence all in one particular conversation that's that's a solid you're i'm ready to see you race here tonight <laughs> and sterilizer for you it's good to have you here in seattle your first time with the forza racing championship how would you describe the experience so far oh man it's it's been so fun it's everything i thought it would be and more um it's just been one of the coolest experiences i've really ever had so thank you guys for having me Absolutely, and of course, these are just a, these are just a, this is one of the teams that are here tonight, gentlemen. What else do we have going on here with the rest of the teams? Well, yeah, that was the first two, of course, F4H with us as well, and of course, we have two more teams that are going to be out there on the track competing here in North America. TPR, they really showed out well for their European group. We'll see; they add Dantastic to it. Uh, what are you expecting out of Lou and Apex? Yeah, a whole new lineup for TPR here. They're throwing out all the European uh, used up people. They've got some fresh <laughs> some fresh minds in there. Excited to see Lou and Dantastic. We've seen them before. Apex, this is the first time we're seeing Apex out here on the track uh, doing a great job. He's ranked number 46 in North America. Mm. So Is he? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that's wrong. I may, that I, may be wrong. I'm not sure. Per I'm not sure. Maybe it's a game attack change for someone. Sure, here we go. It's JSR will be our final group. Commando, Rossi, and South. And the interesting thing here is they're like, you know what? We dominated earlier. Let's just, sure, I'll stay up a couple more hours. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll stay up to do it again. <laughs> we'll stay up to do it again. Commando, Rossi, and South did a, did a great job earlier on today. They managed to be the team who were best able to ride together, help each other out on track, and bring home those points. All right, it's time. Picks and bands. That's race number one. So let's end up finding out who are these guys going to pick or ban? We had all bans the first time through. It was basically like, 
hey, I don't want to race yeah, yeah. these cars. <laughs> I could pick one, but more likely I want to ban want one. Make sure I don't have to race against that. And make sure that car isn't on the track. So a lot of that kind of feeling, that maybe is the most powerful tool that these, these teams have, the ban. Same six cars, though, as, yes. the, uh, as earlier on. Yeah, we saw how powerful that Ford Focus was. Uh, the Falcon was very competitive. Also, the M1 Pro car, but we could see a totally different scenario this time. But the first time, it was the it was the Joe Gibbs Racing NASCAR and the Nissan R390 get knocked out. Uh, so, TX3, if you guys are ready, make your first pick here, or ban. <laughs> ban, more likely. <laughs> Let's see what TX3 ends there up going goes. with for their selection. Oh, man. I'm not surprised. They I'm had surprised. enough of the Ford Focus. You know, I was talking to F4H about this between the streams, and they were saying the Focus was able to run 159s around uh, the Nor uh, Nürburgring. All the rest of the cars were in the two minutes. So this is the fastest car out there. I think TX3 are just saying, we don't want to deal with that again. Yeah, we're done. We're done. All right. And we have actually have F4H in the building, so let's go over to Kate to find out what their picker band's going to be. So obviously this isn't their first rodeo, but there's now a little strategy. You're now seeing what TX3 has banned. Diablo, what you guys going this time? Which which way? Uh, we're going to stick with the same strategy we pulled in EMA earlier. We're going to ban the Nissan R390. Same reasoning for not wanting to drive the car. It's a little bit of an oddball compared to these more racing suited cars. The R390 is a is a car that was a race car that they put on the street. Yeah. Um, they didn't want us to race a Ford again. I know that uh, <laughs> Sterilizer was very quick in that, so that takes one bit away. Uh, so he'll have to change cars, hopefully. We'll see what the uh, what the third pick will be. Hopefully everything stays the same. All right, very interesting. Gentlemen, let's get back to those picks or bands. Yeah, that's right. We, we had bands all earlier, so two cars in the books. We got one more opportunity to select or ban in Maybe, maybe Joe Gibbs Racing is going to be out there. It's <laughs> still, it's still available. Let's have a NASCAR on track. Uh, let's see what TPR. Okay, oh. okay, right. That's basically. <laughs> hey, Coltrane, how about you shut up yeah, a little bit? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's We're enough not about allowing you, Coltrane. That thing, yes. Yeah, we still get to keep the M1 Pro car though. It's one of my favorite cars. Yep. We've got the Zach Speed, Zach Speed Capri, if you can. Little if I can Ford. Say it. Little, a little Ford. Yeah. 1981 version. Big old turbocharger on that short wheelbase. I was having a little go on it. Actually, it didn't spin around as willingly as I thought it would, yeah. but still very slippery on that the That might be the fastest one on the track. Could be the fastest out there. If, it, if it can negotiate its way through. So uh, race number one is coming your way. It'll be interesting to see what those folks voted for out there. Will we have a dry track? Will we have a wet track? Um, we were so happy that it was dry the time before because who would have known what would happen uh, if, it, if it was on a wet track? So you see you got the... Black Falcon, the M1, and of course, that Zach Speed Capri, and we are headed to Germany. It is the Nürburgring. Yeah, what a great track. It has a, a great mix of slow, tight corners. Still some technicality, some very fast, right? Yeah, a lot of technicality, exactly. That's exactly what I was looking for there. In the first sector, in this final sector, to the last chicane here, very technical and some flowing corners as well with the Michael Schumacher S's. All right, here's the grid. I love to see Topher up front. Sterilizer will be P2, Apex third, and here we go. We are all green here in Topher. We'll race down to the first turn one, and he overcooks it big time. All right, you're now in 12th place, Topher. Do we have any parting gifts? Rip the dream. Yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> can't send you that. home with the play at home copy because you already have it. <laughs> uh, so for lap one of seven. Hey, Billy Sue, good to see you here at P7. It's been a while since we've seen Billy Sue out there on track, hasn't he? He's missed the last two races. Uh, it's good to see him back out there, fighting his way up to sixth now as we start the race heading through the first sector. Uh, we've got Topher, yeah, back in last after that pole position. Uh, yeah, made to start from first, but his teammate TX3, Mr. Jack, has taken up the mantle and is leading this race. There you go, the solid wood of JSR Rossi. Thick mahogany headed down here in Nürburgring. Lap one of seven, as I mentioned before. Scott Colinelli tag with you. And we move up to one of the members of TX3 who are hoping for a better showing than they had. It's Billy Sue who's already climbed up a few positions here 
on lap number one. Sterilizer riding along in six. He's moving up. Diablo in fifth right ahead of him. And then Revs, Fantastic, and Topher all in the back. Yeah, Billy Sue doing a stellar performance in the first lap of this race, moving himself up into podium contention. Not quite on the podium yet. His teammate, Mr. Jack, leads through the chicane for the first time. That's a car way off on the grass in the mid-pack there in the run down to this final chicane. Yeah, not sure who that was all the way at the back. As you see Billy Sue right behind Apex. Sterilizer right there. You can see Diablo missing from that sandwich, so he's the one that has fallen back a bit. Tenth spot for him, riding five seconds behind the leaders. Rossi crawling past his teammate Commando on the straight. Those two working together, sixth and seventh, to move up through this pack. It wasn't race one where JSR started to stamp their authority last time out. It was through race two and three that they really started to climb up the table. Well, we got a battle right here between Apex and Billy Sue. And Billy Sue, a little love tap, just letting them know he's there in lap two. And he'll go to the inside this time. TPR in the left Apex. hander. Complete unknown quantity for a lot of these drivers. Somebody coming out for the first time racing this year at this level. Here today, and Apex oh losing it on the power on the way out of sector one. So losing a lot of positions there. Billy Sue up to that podium, third position for him. And Apex. looking forward to wow. with the leaders fall all the way back to 11th before he could get that thing recovered. So he's all the way back there with Topher. But Mr. Jack, I mean, you got to tip the cap to this member of TX3. He, he has been very formative today. Whatever vehicle they put him in, he has risen to the challenge. And currently out in front here on Nürburgring, our first race of the evening here in North America. And he, he's looked really good. I mean, we got a battle. We got a one-two battle up there. As you got Mr. Jack and JR South as we blinked an eye, and, and South went to the inside. South managing to take the lead there. Mr. Jack has been looking strong all day, hasn't he? You know, it's Mr. Jack looked good in the championship this year. We got towards the ending stage of the series too, and he bowed out. And sometimes when you take that pressure off yourself. You find pace and skill that you didn't know that you had. And Mr. Jack looking so strong out here that it's very, very regretful that he's not going to be coming to Mexico City. Well, South is now up in front. So let's jump back to JSR Rossi riding right behind Sterilizer, who's moved his well self up the grid. But Rossi to the inside. Both these guys in that Zach Speed Capri Turbo. Nearly 500 horsepower, only 296 torque on this thing. Seems a bit low for, but it is, you know, 1981. It was all about the HP. They weren't turning out the torque. Yeah, it's uh, it's got a turbo on it, a lot of turbo lag. So you want to keep those revs nice and high. Uh, Sterilizer telling and me you have to be in first gear through yeah. turn one. You have to use all the whole gear range in that car to get the torque down uh, to optimize it as there's so little. It's under 2,000 pounds, but with that, uh, you mentioned the turbo, but it's just an inline four. And I think that's where you're, you're seeing the lack of torque right on that Zach Speed car. Three of seven. Lap three here at Nürburgring, race one. And right now, JSR South really pulling away a little bit on Mr. Jack by about seven tenths of a second. That's just a couple car lengths. And it seems right now, Mr. Jack's going to have to wait for a moment of maybe a mistake, something we haven't seen a lot of from JSR South today. Rossi through the same sector. Yeah, just behind, navigating his way through Schumacher, up to the top of the circuit. JSR looked dominant at the end of the EMEA race earlier on today. Uh, no one could challenge them, but TX3 changing roster a little bit, swapping things around, and now looking like they're able to post some kind of a challenge to Jap Speed Racing. If I said the words Pinewood Derby, would that mean anything to you? <laughs> it wouldn't, from context. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, in America, we have a thing called the Boy Scouts that people go through, and there's a thing where you, you race these these pine cars. It's called a Pinewood <laughs> Derby, and it's, you know, they're small, right? Yeah. But every time I see Rossi, I'm like, all right, well, you know, it's just the life-size Pinewood Derby that he's riding around in. I mean, if your country is big enough, then I guess just about anything happens, doesn't it? It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Lap four of seven. That's what we're known for, ranch dressing and, <laughs> Pinewood, and Derbies. The Pinewood Derby. Pinewood <laughs> Derby. 
Mr. Jack here, second place still, and looking forward towards South, who's overtaking. We can see Billy Sue getting squarely there as Rossi starts to apply the pressure to him. Right now, TX3 and JSR are about matched. JSR first and fourth, TX3 second and third. This is an amazing battle right here between third and fourth, Billy Sue and Rossi. And this is the battle that determines which team wins. TX3 hold steady or can JSR take the lead? Well, Rossi is known to really show out in these team competitions, especially for Jap Speed Racing. Yeah, the run down to Dunlop, it's very late breaking into here. You can use the camber on the inside of the corner to rotate your car, clip one apex, clip two, and power down up towards Schumacher. Both of these cars putting down all of their torque, all of their horsepower as you climb up, use all the road left right and flow through this track. Rossi looking very, very strong behind Billy Sue. Just remember Topher was on the pole position. <laughs> right. He uh, and, and, and fell from first to worst on the first turn. That's a mistake from Billy Sue, dipping the rear tire onto the grass. Rossi's through, doesn't need a second invitation. Topher, yeah, as you say, perhaps better as a painter than a driver. <laughs> is, that, is that fair to say? And he would be OK with that. I he think, would, I think, I, he, I think would. he would appreciate that compliment. To be fair, the, the JSR, the, the TX3 cars, excuse me, TX3 Topher and the TX3 Painter, be they're wait. beautiful. Hey, let's go back to some of the best in the business. When you're up there at P1 and it's your first time and you're going down to the first turn, it's nothing like having a little bit extra adrenaline and you overcook it, you miss the breaking point because you have no reference. It's only you. You know, there's, if he was in P2, I think he would have been okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And you're, you're in the run from the start. You're breaking at a different point than you would be if you were running all the way from the back corner. 100%. Completely different speed. People don't tend to practice it. And you could see Topher there, yeah, slipping up. It's not, it's very difficult to do. It's, very, it's a very easy mistake. Let's go over to Kate to check in on what's going on in the rest of the world. Ali, you just said uh, Topher slipping up there. He got on chat just a moment ago and said, RIP me. And then, of course, Topher, you've done yourself a mischief there, mate. And it continues on about Topher. You know, and it's, it's, it's one of those things that when you're driving a car and you're also uh, joining us on chat, you know your day has gone, your race has gone different than what you had hoped. Well, they say don't text and drive. Don't paint and drive either, right? I mean, maybe it's <laughs> adding some finishing touches on uh, on the cars that are going down in Mexico City. I don't I don't recommend it, especially when you're in P1. It's a good it's a good thing to have him out on track. I like seeing Topher out here. Uh, the painters sometimes feel like little background characters, don't they? Not able to shine in the in the spotlight, uh, not for themselves, just in the paints they create. So Topher out here on track and kind of showing his face, maybe lacking a bit of pace. Well, if you happen to miss some of the drama, we got a replay here on our first race of the day on Nurburg Ring here in North America. They tell me they have a replay. The powers that be. Well, while we're waiting for it, <laughs> can I just say, Rossi, you animal, you absolute animal. Rossi working his way All up. All the way up from in a second. To third. He's in second now. He's pressuring his own teammate for the win here. Rossi is on fire. There's something about Team Rossi, right? When when he's out there in a team setting, and maybe that takes some of the pressure off of him. And he has powered his way up into P2. I think you're right. I think it's taking the pressure off of him. He does this every single time. Rossi just flying on these team events. There he is, straight into first now. And I think that's the last time that anyone in this race is going to see Rossi. He's going to check out now in the start. South putting up a fight here into turn two. Uh, and, and doing a fair job of it, too. Hey, got to be careful here. You already got one, two, maybe locked up on the podium. Don't get yourself caught up. And, and allow Billy Sue and the other TX3 bros to come flying through here. And Rossi's pushing. I mean, he's, he's going to move to first and hold it. That's what acceleration does. The car the characteristics here between the Mercedes and the Ford, very, very different. The Ford all about acceleration. The Mercedes mid-corner speed. Out of every corner, Rossi can just disappear. You can check out. And you're saying with that turbo lag, you just you get on it a little earlier, anticipating the kick in. For sure, yeah. You can even gauge the clutch while you're mid-corner, get the engine revved up, spool up the turbo, and then release the clutch on the way out. If you can control that wheel spin, you can get faster acceleration. Lap seven, excuse me, six of seven, one to go.
here on Nürburgring GP Circuit. Scott Cole, Alley Tack along with you. It's been a great Series 2. We'll be down in Mexico City on September 29th and 30th. That's when the playoffs will start for Series 2. And then, of course, October 20th and 21st, that is the championship in London, England. Never heard of it, but I hear it's, well, I don't, I don't hear great things. Yeah, I don't know where that is. Uh, I, I guess Ingerland. Uh, some place called some place called the UK. Uh, Mr. Jack, he once led this race, Scott. He's now in fourth. Wow. Sterilizer in fourth, Commando in fifth. There's Santastic in ninth. He's slow and steady, moving his way up. Billy Sue in third. Trying to hold on to the podium for his team, but back to the inside goes south. So there's a good battle here between Second and third between South and Billy Sue here in the final lap. Infinite laps, and I'm gonna call it that Billy Sue will overtake South every time in that Capri. But there aren't infinite laps. There's half of one lap, three quarters of one lap remaining as they exit, exit sector one. So not long for Billy Sue to get it done, and a good chance here for South to be able to defend him off. Revving it all the way up, heading down. Little left-hander, now they'll go back to the right. Can they hold the apex? South, a little bit better coming out of that. Squirrely was Billy Sue trying to hold it together, trying to stay on the podium. Has his eyes on second, currently in third. Here it is, the uphill exit from Dunlop. This will be a moment that Billy Sue's acceleration will serve him well. The run up towards Schumacher, he can hold on to that gap up to south ahead. He might have a chance here before the end of this race. Coming up on turn 10, the left-hander. Then turn 11, back to the right. Tracks flow so well here at Nürburgring. Sort of get lathered up, you get into a rhythm. And south just through every apex, just pulls away for just a moment. Here it is, the last chance. South moves to the inside. Billy Sue's got the top end. Who's going to be better on the brakes, South or Billy Sue? South able to get back into it through the chicane. Will hold Billy Sue for the moment. Still a ways to go. He's coming on the outside now. The outside into the last corner. Now it's going to be a drag race to the line. Billy Sue looking for a line on the inside as South powers out. This is kind of come down coming to the line. Coming down. And Billy Sue will take second. What a final lap for Billy Sue. Finishing in a JSR sandwich there at the end, but you called it. Uh, you know, when you get on that straight line coming out of turn 15, you knew he'd have the acceleration. He had so much at the bottom end, didn't he? Just blasting off the line in that Ford. South, you know, what can you do on a straight? You can't slalom, you can't swerve. You just got to look out your window and watch Billy Sue go by. You can at least try to take up as much space as possible <laughs> right. without, yeah. you know, without calling attention to yourself. I really felt like he just slid to the outside and said, here's your, here's your track. Here it is, right? You can, you can make one move. He could have darted over to the right. He could have done it one time. Yeah, maybe, maybe it would swing wide out. and then come back in and, yeah. and and see if you can catch Billy Sue in a in a losing that momentum, but he carries it straight through and tip of the cap to <laughs> Billy Sue un, unofficially finishing second. Sure thing, uh, amazing race, wasn't it? The Capris moving forward, Rossi burst through the pack first of all, taking the lead of that race, and Billy Sue was like, "Huh, I didn't realize that you could do that in this car." <laughs> all right, let's go, let's go, and he manages to bring it up to second before the end. So the Mercedes that was south. Mr. Jack in, uh, I think that was, a, that was a BMW, both of them relegated to third and fourth. That's right. Let's take a look at the replay here of race number one here on Nürburgring. And we can't say enough about what Rossi did. I mean, unbelievable. You saw Topher from the get-go. Says, uh, all right, well, this, this car has a bit of power. It was unlucky for him. I mean, everyone knows Topher's the painter. Everyone knows that he's not maybe the fastest guy out there. It, he's, he's also, he's good at driving. He, just, he didn't just throw it off. He's no, a no, pretty yeah. good driver. It was unlucky. And there you saw Apex. Yep. Was riding along pretty well there in third and fourth. But next thing you know, got a little off on the side. Couldn't recover. Couldn't get back into that traffic. And sometimes you don't want to twitch it back in there. You know, you just slow down. Sure. Lose a couple positions instead of yeah. losing seven. He could have lost three or four instead of, uh, you know, falling that far back. 
This was the battle between Rossi and South for the lead. South did put up a good fight on this lap, lap six or seven, but Rossi got away and eventually love that defense around the outside. Very brave. I'll throw it to the inside on his teammate here in lap six, and that would be all she wrote. She made it stick since then, and then coming down in that final lap, Billy Sue just powering his way in, and it was back and forth. All the way through this lap. It yeah, was that, great, was, that it? was going through the start finish line. That was starting that lap, and really every corner, all 15 turns here on Nurburg, they would battle out till the very end with Billy Sue, and that'll put a smile on your face. Yeah, that's awesome to see. They're <laughs> just plowing by. South's also a great driver, though. I like seeing him out here because like, you don't see so much of South. I think he'll be coming to Mexico, uh, so it'll be a nice opportunity to introduce him to uh, the Forza Racing Championship uh, audience. That's so that, that'll be cool. Yeah, that's going to be great to see him down there. Let's take a look at the provisional results. As we saw them for race number one, Rossi up top, Billy Sue South. And to, to give South a little bit of defense, it was obviously that the, the Ford Zaxby Capri Turbo was just the faster car, had the better pace. 100%. It looked to me like that was the car to win out there. Rossi will take the two points extra for being the fastest Capri out there. South, though, a little bit of a, uh, a boost, a pick-me-up will get the two points for being the fastest Mercedes out there. So JSR. If this stays. If this is still provi <laughs> yeah, provisional results. So let's kick it over to Kate Osborne. You know, I think the word that really comes to mind over here on these comfy couches is fast and how fast a lot of the cars were out there. Sterilizer, you were saying you felt good there and then you all of a sudden you looked up and what? <laughs> well, uh, I ran a 59.7 in the, in the Capri and uh, in practice, you know, compared to my practice times, that's pretty good. Then I see Rossi run a 58.8. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my gosh. He was he was on my tail the entire time and got past me pretty easily. Hats off to that guy. Same with Billy Sue. They, they had crazy pace in that car. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was really impressive. All right, and Revs, for you, your breakdown, you know, coming in there, feeling good about your, you know, results to a point yet. Of, of course, you can always do better. Yeah, um, I just, I think it came down to starting position. I thought my pace was decent. Um, but South was just able yeah. to just <laughs> run away with it. Yeah. Um, I felt good though, but I mean, I st starting way in the back like that, it's, it's not going to help. Yeah. No, yeah. starting position is always key with that. Right. Yeah, and absolutely. of course Diablo for you, I mean, it's, it's, an, it's been, an, it's been a day for you. Yeah. Um, I feel like that race, I, I, I felt all right going in pace wise. Um, but I feel like this race, everyone had the time to kind of get ready and everyone stepped their pace up a lot. You know, I, ra I ran in the two minutes in the BMW, which I think of the three that we ran was probably the slowest car. Mm -hmm. um, but there was an incident with me and Commando going into the uh, chicane. I, pr I it probably judges racing as I ended up getting <laughs> the short end of the straw. So I was at the back of the pack and then I made a mistake with a lap to go and Dantastic got around me. I just... I just got beat. Yeah. <laughs> I can't really say yeah. anything else about it. I just, I just got beat. Ah, I, you know, a driver who accepts that, thank you so much for that. <laughs> it doesn't happen. Yeah, I try to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we know where you all could get to get to involved in our show is the polls. And it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out today for the second, for the third race. We know that um, it was going to be Silverstone or it was going to be Seabrig earlier. Revs and I had the conversation about which one really suited him in the car that he was going to be driving. Diablo, you have the mic. What do you think you you like about uh, Silverstone, and what do you like about Sebring? Um, I would rather do Sebring. I feel like my pace is a little bit better, and also just be different than we did Silverstone earlier. Sebring is more of an acceleration track, so there's a lot of straights and yeah. not so much momentum track. I feel it, it makes for better passing opportunities because there's more braking zones that way, and you're not so much follow the leader through certain sections like Silverstone. Yeah. You have maggots and Beckett's the uh, the quick right to left to right. Um, you really it's pulling a pass there is extremely difficult, if not dangerous. Sure. Um, whereas Sebring, you know, you can throw the car down into turn 17 sunset bend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can make some really great uh, passing opportunities and it's fun to watch that way. Yeah. Well, I think there's some really cool uh, GT uh, icons that'll be racing there as well. It'll be really interesting. But before we get to any of those races, gentlemen, let's get the results going for this first race. All right. That seems very do, cool. Do we have a final result? We haven't had final results. I no. want to see them. Yeah, we we, we got to have them. Here we, we are. Final results. No penalties. You mentioned the extra two points for Rossi for finishing tops for his uh, car class, and also South getting uh, the extra two points. So with 14 points for him, and then there's Mr. Jack. So we really had three different vehicles running in the top four. That 
really shows that pretty balance there in that opener race. Yeah, those those extra points letting the rich get richer a little bit in that first race. Uh, the three drivers out there managed to do it, as you say, Rossi, South, and Mr. Jack. A team that needs to work a bit harder, though, after race number one is going to be TPR. You can see their top finisher there was Lou in seventh place uh, with Dan Tastic and Apex ninth and 11th. So they're going to need to do a little bit better in race two and three in order to be in a chance of winning. Well, that was the Picks and Bands race. Time for race number two, and it is going to be our oddball race. Uh, and this is where it starts to get just a little wonky. But, you know, in Series 1, we had we had some fun with that. I, I think it's always fun. And I, I love watching. It's, it's so, like, it, it feels like a cartoon, right? right? When you've got, like, a big, heavy car going along, you know, tuned by the bassoon, for example. And then, like, a little car going along, coming through. <laughs> Just looking at me like that. <laughs> it is, though. It's like a musical. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll never get over the hand gestures. You know, you know. <laughs> gotta, gotta you need get props. You need props. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's fun and emotive. And, and it's cool to watch a little light car zipping around, nipping through the heavy cars. What was the sausage track, by the way? It, it wasn't Indy. I, I, it have, wasn't, I no. have somewhat of a sausage here. Brands Hatch Indy, yeah. All right. Google it. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's right, right there. Let's uh, look at the cars that we're going to have out here in this oddball race. And I, I, Topher better be in his own paint. Oh, yeah. He will be. It's a beautiful paint. Like, he spent all that time making it. It's got his beautiful logo up there on the little side wing just behind the cabin. Um, what, what a stunning work these people do. And as I said before, every single shape here, every single logo, all built from scratch and put together from basic shapes like squares and circles, and they just they combine them and make them very small and make it all look very, very beautiful. It's, it's mind-boggling. It, it, it genuinely it, it is. It is what it is. I mean, the amount of time these guys put in. Of course, uh, the Subaru, the 1980 Brat will be out there. Of course, there's a Forza edition of it. Two back seats, right? Avoid the tariffs. Correct, yeah, some kind of a, a, a sort of tariff-avoiding scam that <laughs> they've super pulled off. Scam's the wrong word, isn't it? Uh, uh, but no, AB it's graphics. spot on. <laughs> spot on. <laughs> AB graphics designed this paint. It's done a beautiful job with it. Uh, there it is, using its four-wheel drive capacity. AB graphics, sadly, not racing today. Uh, it should be, every racer should have been out with their team, I think, if Tova was. Yeah, yeah, TPR has had some excellent liveries throughout the, the season. And, of course, our f final car out there, the, oh, goodness. Is this gonna? Is this hurting you? <laughs> is this the announcement? Does this mean? Is this the? Is this mean it's the Maserati? I, I, I take the as the announcement <laughs> that the Maserati is back to pick the kids up from soccer practice. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the FLG painted this one. Fort delivery guy. He's been doing an amazing job all season with uh, F4H doing a lot of their paints. He also does paints for other teams as well. He gets sure. uh, does Noble. He does G2. These are the paints that you see in the very, very top teams over at the competitions. So FLG, an absolutely top painter. He's a busy, sport. busy man. And of course, IMS Indianapolis Grand Prix Circuit will be the track. Uh, and I tell you what, this is a flat track. Takes a lot of skill, a lot of accuracy when you're driving through. Uh, and we're getting word from the back. We'd rather they rather you say the word ploy instead of scam. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the scheme. <laughs> Here's the grid for race two. Rossi, Billy, Sue, and South are one, two, three. Mr. Jack Sterlides, Commando. They're in the middle of the pack. Lou Revs, fantastic. Diablo, Apex, and Topher. Topher's going to have a bit of a guide through as we are all green here on Indy. One of the most, if, if we, let's be honest, it's the most famous track in North America. And here we go, lap one of nine. And Rossi will go flying down to that first turn. Here's Billy Sue looking back at Mr. Jack Commando. Hot on their heels. This F-150 actually was really strong the first time through here in uh, uh, our European races earlier today. It seemed like the fastest car on the track, didn't it? The trophy truck. This may well turn into the Billy Sue and Rossi show as uh, those two accelerate away. Well, maybe just the Rossi show looking at that gap off the start, absolutely plowing down that road, uh, JSR Rossi. So good to see Billy Sue and Mr. Jack starting to get tangled up in each other through sector one. That's not going to help. You got to be, I mean, it, it, it's still a team race. Last time I checked it, Mr. Jack getting off on the side. 
You missed him back there, and someone's in the all-white. This is true soccer practice right here. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah, it matches my, my iPod. Yeah. <laughs> Mom's going to be a little late picking you up. <laughs> I, think, I think that's Commando. Yeah, it's just JSR <laughs> Commando <laughs> is uh, racing second place. So I overtook Billy Sue in the Maserati. The Maserati is the fastest car out there Absolutely. through the apexes, sure. around the corners. On the straights, the F-150 will have it. So Billy Sue might have a chance to overtake as we come around toward the end of lap one. Well, Billy Sue now in third. And you can see him right there trying to hold that line. But it's not unusual to see that F-150 sort of askew as it's making its way around each and every turn. Billy Sue, he looks uncomfortable driving. Yeah. <laughs> look at him through one corner. He doesn't look like a happy Billy Sue out there. Boy, that looked like an opportunity that he could have got to the inside there. But there's really nothing to gain. Nothing to gain at that very point through one and two. As they move on, it's sweeping right hand turn on three and then a hard right. They're on turn four. This is a tough track. It's a difficult one. It's it's tough because it's flat. It's essentially easy in some senses because there's not any undulation that's going to throw you off and it cracks in the tarmac, but it accentuates the speed that you can get through accuracy. Billy Sue throwing it down the inside there. He's going to be slower through the corners, but he's going to have to hold Commando up on the apexes. Drop that car down to the apex and just keep it slow. They use that wide stance, that big frame to hold off that Maserati, but Commando not having it. And they've been up all day racing for this DJSR guys, and they're at no point gonna slow down and now south in the Brat. He'll join the pack, see if he can get in there. And now Billy Sue once again is in a JSR sandwich. Yeah, Rossi out in front, JSR second, TX3 third, and JSR fourth. So Billy Sue, the only driver out there standing between JSR and a one, two, three finish. Let's see, what would be in a JSR sandwich? The, the J is either like a jam <laughs> or jelly, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that. That's a good start <clears throat> right. to a sandwich. W what, what's S? Salad. A salad, a salad on a sandwich? Salad and, and jam. <laughs> I'm not okay with that. If you, maybe salami? <laughs> jam and salami. <laughs> and some relish. <laughs> Revs, they're in six. Sterilizer. Running along in fifth. Lap three of nine. You can see that new TPR team. It's always interesting to see the new drivers out there. TPR Lou out wide and losing out in sector one. That's a shame. Dan Tastic also back there. Uh, TPR team looking a little bit out of sorts here at the Forza RC level. Harmonic says in chat, you have to eat that sandwich down in Mexico. <laughs> Jam and salad. We still haven't figured out what your R is. We better come up with something pretty good to mask the rest of that. <laughs> Raisins. Raisins. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Sue in third, south to the inside, and the Brat. Boy, pretty move there from south. South has had some, him and Rossi have had some tremendous overtaking over the first part of the day, and it's continued on to tonight. They have both of those drivers well, managing Billy to Sue. move through there. Billy Sue. Losing out there, just looking at the back of South's car, it's difficult sometimes to change your rhythm from defending to attacking. And Billy Sue coming a cropper there towards the end of the lap. Well, you mentioned earlier that he is not enjoying driving this truck right now. You like, can, like, you can see chemical it, yeah. look like a fish in water, you know what I mean? But sure. uh, Billy Sue is, <laughs> he's not enjoying this challenge. It's a, it's a car that you can either look confident in or you can look like you're Steering in, coming towards the corner, adjusting, steer away from the corner, steering in again, coming forwards and backwards. The whole thing looks very not smooth. Uh, rough, if you like, from Billy C. Yeah, and sterilizer's in fifth, so if you get up there in your sterilizer, I'd just throw a move, right? Because Billy Sue is so discombobulated right yeah, now. Yeah, you, you just can't defend. You, you, you can't keep, defend. You, let's have the domino effect, right? So things are going well, you're, you don't feel like you're in control, you're, you're, you know, you're unconfident in the things that you're doing, and Hey, throw another move on him. Yeah, yeah, just keep, and just keep him coming. You know, you don't let, if you give Billy Sue space right now, he's a good driver, he's a strong driver. He might he'll, figure it he'll out. He'll learn, he'll yeah. figure it out, and he'll, he'll lock it down. Get the pressure onto Billy Sue if I'm sterilizing, get the move in there, and uh, just make sure that he's always out of sorts. Lap four of nine. 
Billy Sue trying to hold on to fourth. Sterilizer has been closing in. He's already lost a few spots for Billy Sue. And let's see who's who's next. <laughs> it's Sterilizer can't keep it so focused because he's got one of those F-150s behind him. Of course, that's his teammate, Paul, a.k.a. Revs. So there's some, a little bit of comfort in that. All right, well, you got your teammate behind you, a little touch of the wall there as they go back into one and two. Lap four of nine, Scott Cole Alley tag with you here for race number two. Uh, here on a celebration of series two, the playoffs are coming up. Boy, a little bit of wheel spin up there ahead of a little lock up. <laughs> I think that's Billy Sue out there, honestly, uh, trying to get the power down to the straight, leaving a big cloud behind him. Five of nine in Mexico City, September 29th and 30th. That's a Friday and Saturday. There you go, Rossi in his natural habitat, all alone at the front of the race, absolutely dominating. Boy, he is, I mean, from the get-go. I mean, through pretty much after turn three and four, he was gone. For sure. And it just shows how versatile Rossi is as a driver. Somebody able to jump into any kind of car and drive it at its very limit and drive it at limits that other drivers don't know about. Sterilizer, you know, we were interviewing him just between the break there. He was saying, I was running 59s in that, and I thought that was good. And then Rossi <laughs> came along, he's got a 58. Where's, like, where's he getting that pace from? Rossi just too fast today. And that adds up. Lap over lap over lap. Dantastic. Fantastic. Moving into seventh. Can he hold it? The Maserati on his outside of TX3. And he'll fall back just a little bit. No, he's going to put it to the inside here on one. Wow, Mr. Jack doing everything, but he's just going to fall in line. And now he got a bit of chaos to see if everybody can recover. Seems like it's the status quo as they come back up on the oval through 14, back to the start finish line once again. That brat getting bullied by the other cars. Fantastic holding his own just about, but every time we get to a straight, it's back to, back yeah, to square I, one. I, I called that one and two. It was actually uh, 12 and 13 coming back around the late parts of that lap number five. But Mr. Jack there on the straight takes it right back. Something that we've seen all too well. You see another wheel spin from Billy Sue, who's just trying to, he's living off the accelerator right now. He is just wrestling that car around the track. He'll be looking at the lap counter, just counting them down, waiting for lap number nine. Looks uncomfortable in that car. Up ahead, we're back in this battle for fifth position. Cars darting around up ahead, Dantastic. I don't know, I don't know a lot about Dantastic. You got any? You that the only time, was, the only time on we've seen Dantastic has been in the uh, the previous team event at TPR. So he was out racing with that. Uh, I haven't seen him in a Wednesday showdown. Not somebody I know. I, I know him to be uh, to have been in the community for a long time. Uh, an old school TPR player, but not someone who I know well. He's got to watch out because Diablo nipping at his heels here in lap six. Or you see Commando and South. Battling it out. Mando got to be careful there. We've seen several times that the Maserati is easy to get a little twitchy with. Just jumps on board there while Dantastic was two wheels <laughs> and on the inside of revs. That was just a moment when half stand up on the desk and panic. Just but, about got it under control. But you can see this is where that F-150 and Maserati Disappears. really get going down the, the stretch across the start finish line. One more time, yeah, why not? Lou's going to go by. Mr. Jack's going to go by. But then when you get back into the technicality of this track, I know it's flat, but th this is where the brat starts to make some moves. The question is, is can you get a big enough lead coming out of 14 to, to cross the finish line before the other guys come right by you? My answer is no. The, yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. The answer looks like it's no. You know. Dantastic making up two more of those positions, bringing them back in sector one. He's straight through, but here we are in the back straight of the track. 
yep, see you later, Lou. And we're going to have Mr. Jack looking at his rear as well with that Maserati. So two drivers looking to come straight through again. This battle is forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. We go to the straights, the Maserati and the F-150 come through. We get to the corners, the Brat dominates. Fantastic, back to the inside again. A little bump there here in lap seven. Fantastic, trying to hold on, able to get it back for the back end. And that's that's a smart move by Mr. Jack. Just, hey, all right. Yeah, yeah, bail. I'm going to back off a little bit. Let's go over to Cade, who's got more on Dantastic. Dantastic uh, running eighth right now, trying to maintain his position there. Uh, Harmonic on chat was saying, Dan's an old Forza 2 legend. So obviously this bumping and rubbing with some other racers is not something that's new to him. And he's obviously proven himself time and time again. A lot of folks think in Forza 2 was the best one, you know, uh, on the earlier parts of the series in those first couple of years of Forza that Forza 2 really near and dear to a lot of folks hearts lap eight of nine. You can see Dantastic really does well battling those apexes. But once you allow some there's two I mean real big straights on this one right it's uh, when you're going from coming out of six all the way down to seven and of course when you come off 14 back around to one. Uh, that's where if you're in this brat, you you're you're not not gaining any ground. Let's just put it that way. You're you're actually <laughs> losing ground at, at at a a big clip. Yeah, at a at a massive rate. The, you know, and that shows how well South is doing uh, up here in the brat in third place. JSR locking out one, two, and three. Rossi, Commando, and South. And that means that all three of these drivers are going to pick up the extra points for being the fastest drivers in their category. And that's an extra six points for JSR out here. They are crushing it. Erasi, Commando, South. We might have our first one, two, three podium of the day team wise. Of course, it was Chemical who ruined that earlier when he just busted through <laughs> in the in the ridge line. And it looked really good in the in the F-150 as well. Yeah, TPR Lou not quite able to uh, to fill those big shoes that Chemical left behind in the TPR team. If you're just tuning in and you're going, what the what? This is our oddball race, just having a little fun. A team exhibition here on uh, one of our off weeks while we're getting geared up to take 36 drivers down to Mexico City for the Series 2 playoffs just 17 days from now. Commando and South. A little peekaboo here in the final lap. So they're moving around the outside. <laughs> That's a gutsy move from South. South <laughs> he's masterful in that brat. <laughs> yeah, he is. He absolutely is. Rossi looks like he's he ducking back here as he overtaking. He's overtaking Apex there, lapping him this race. So uh, this is I think That's the first a time. This is like the first time I've seen it in the Forza Racing Championship. Someone lapping someone else. Rossi, uh, yeah, looking very classy indeed out here. I had one time a try passing who got tried lapping one time. <laughs> I think that's I think that's about all I remember for someone that didn't take significant damage. Uh, obviously, we've had those where you, you, you get so knocked out of it that you have to pit. And by the time you finally get yourself back out there, the rest of the pack has gone by. Sure thing. Up on the oval. JSR dominating through here in North America. There you see Rossi in that mahogany wood. Make a fine truck, make a fine canoe. I, I, I actually assume mahogany is a bad thing to make a canoe in. I think it's heavy. I think it's quite a heavy wood. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I made this mahogany canoe for you, Ali. Why don't you it's take her for a as, spin? As an ornament. <laughs> <laughs> Have you updated your life insurance? <laughs> but that is. We've got to say it, it's a one, two, three yeah. for JSR. That's right. Podium lockout, Rossi, Commando, South. Billy Sue coming in in fourth. I just try to keep you up on what Billy Sue's doing out <laughs> yeah. there. Always gets I, I my know, spirits. I, I know you uh, are <laughs> near and dear to yourself, but there has not, and we haven't done a lot of team racing, right? But this is, what, the third iteration? We did it at the Invitational. We did it at the, uh, sure. the, the Series 1 recap. Now in the Series 2 recap at JSR absolutely dominant every single time as well 
ever yeah. since we first did team competition. And we throw some wild stuff we've, out there. We've thrown them all, with, <laughs> all over the place. Oddball races, different rules Mercedes sets. Benz, big racing trucks. Bonus points. Yeah, and whatever it is, whatever we throw at them, JSR come out on top. And they're, yeah, the great thing about them, they're a community team. They're friends. There's buddies racing together, you know? There's none of this, uh, you know, kind of full-on of, full seriousness of esports happening there. It's just... We're buddies. We love Forza. By the We're way, here smashing it. I'm going to put this out here, and it, it's I'm probably going to get shot down by the powers that be. Okay, okay. But it, you know what? The flagpole. Let's hey, go. The team that wins sh should be the team that's here. And, and no disrespect <laughs> to F4A. She's hanging out with us. There are guys, USA, USA, all that. But JSR, hey, if, if, I, if I have to put a few bucks in to make this happen, I'll make it happen. They deserve it. <laughs> they do. They do. And, you know, it's it always interesting to see how it changes their performance as well, being in the studio, right? Uh, yeah. F4H, some, some of the drivers doing a great job here. Maybe in the it's easier somewhere. to be at home. Maybe it's easier to be at home for some people. For other people, it's not. And, uh, yeah, always Get a your boxers, some Cocoa Crisp. <laughs> <laughs> that's at home? <laughs> that's at oh, oh, the studio. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Notice they always shoot me for the waist <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I, 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 That's all I can say about that. So adjudication process here after race number two, a dominant one, two, three by JSR. And really, some of the only drama we saw was Dantastic making some moves and Billy Sue just Hold yeah, on, holding on, hold on, right. holding on for dear life, really. Yeah. And that car was driving him. You could see it. You know, <laughs> he was he wasn't in control of it. It was darting all over the place. Able to bring it home fourth position. That's a, yeah, that's that's an achievement for him. Some dogs don't want to be walked. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? They don't want to be put on a leash. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the replay here. Race number two, oddball race to say the least. But how about JSR South and that brat living up to the name? Such a fun performance in that brat. And I loved all the drivers out there in the brat. Every corner they were up the inside, round the outside, coming round the big vehicles, and every straight, every straight, all that hard work was undone for them again. Does that car originally, like, it needs a camper thing. You know what I mean? Like, it, it needs some topper on the back there. I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I hear you. That'd be, that'd be quite nice looking. I, you'd miss the seats, though. You wouldn't be able to see them. The little backwards facing Yeah, I'm seats. okay with that. I'm just talking Pratt and Cal. I'm trying to get good MPG <laughs> okay. while, right. while, while I'm out there. <laughs> Lab eight of nine here. And what about Revs? Revs just trying to hold off TPR's F-150 the best that you can. But forget about it. Right by him. Then on the final lap, what can you say about JSR Rossi? Absolute. He's the dominant of the dominant. He is just so, so strong in team competition, isn't he? And it's not like he's weak in individual competition. I don't want to give that impression. No, no. He's not weak. He's always in the finals, but he's just not quite at the top. Whereas in team competition, he just shines. And I love to see it. Is some of that that Lage doesn't have a team of three. <laughs> he doesn't. Lace hasn't always. Venom didn't make three. the trip. I don't know. I don't know. Is it? Is it? He's a bigger fish in a smaller pond. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's there's an argument to be said there. At the same time, you know, we see people like Venom out in the last team event, not winning a lot of races. See people. Mm, yeah, yeah. Maybe you got a point. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to play devil's advocate. It's like a look at the provisional results as we saw them. We saw the one, two, three of Rossi, Commando, and South for JSR. Billy Sue holding on there. Really not too bad. I know we didn't look at it all too much, but our guys in the studio, F4H, actually do a nice job at five and six. And, of course, Diablo down in 10th. I'm sure we'll hear some story out of him again of what happened in his journeys. Yeah, three UK flags there at the top as well. They don't know it's the NA stream, do they? I think that's the reason they stayed up. <laughs> I'll, I'll be. I'll, you want to be hundred percent real? Like they're like, all right, we'll stay up. We're we'll sleepy. Stay, we'll do this. Sure, we got our cocoa cuff, you know, our cocoa crisp and all that, but we're ready to go. Let's go over to Kate, who's hanging out with F4H. You know, I, not, cocoa crisps, Diablo. Would you rather be at home in terms of like comfort? I mean, how much is that playing an impact in your performance in the races, especially that we just saw in, in race number two? Um, if I wanted to be a little bit quicker, I mean, anyone that's sitting on their home setup, I think is a little bit better. Like, uh, I think they were saying, you know, sitting kind of at home with maybe like a bowl of cereal or something, or just, you know, in your, your chair. I actually play, I have like a, like a rig where you have a racing wheel on top of it. So I kind of sit kind of low slung and yeah. the TVs, you know, but 
half the distance perfectly as these TVs placed are. Yeah. exactly the way it should be yeah you know i'm used to playing on that so and then the other thing too is when i'm i'm sitting on that because like the racing pedals and stuff for me i always stretch my legs out and i kind of sit like kind yeah. of with my feet elevated whereas <laughs> here i feel like i kind of have to sit kind of close so i was just every time i stop i just kind of yeah, stretch, stretch the legs your legs out. a little bit yeah, I mean, See, it might be different Who you knows? know it's like sitting in the exit row of a plane but i just keep my <laughs> An legs extra tucked six right. inches of leg room yeah lucky you yeah right i wish <laughs> Well, what the differences of racing at home in Mexico City, for instance, you're going in 34th, uh, sterilizer 36, you know, revs, you, know, you 25th there. The differences of playing at home and then being in a competition state, knowing that you, the people you're battling with are now next to you. You're seeing their adrenaline. You're seeing the physical side of what this is really all about. Yeah, that that this playing at home versus us being here and every the other three teams are playing from the comfort of their home and then bringing everyone into a competition setting where you have you know kind of the pods and everyone has their own TV and mm -hmm. Xbox and that that I really like I love the competition aspect of it with everyone kind of in the same spot competing together because there's a lot of camaraderie there's some rivalry it's yeah. it's a lot of fun to be able to do that uh, really blessed opportunity to go down to Mexico City all th with these two guys and two more from our team to go. So it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a really great time in two weeks. You know, Diablo, you and I were talking earlier before this whole day kicked off, before you got comfy and cozy on this couch. Yeah, uh, about the comfy cozy couch. <laughs> the comfy cozy couch. The importance of, of Mexico City for you and really this end of this series, what it really means to you. Yeah, so um, I, I think it was maybe a few days ago or the beginning of the week I tweeted out um, that I wouldn't be going to London. Uh, first of all, because I, I would have run out of talent. And second <laughs> of all, I ran out of money and vacation time. Vacation um, time is... Yes. The, I didn't finish up season one because I wasn't going to be able to go to the playoffs here in Seattle. Um, but for the... Uh, for season two, I realized I would have the time to go to Mexico City, and I said, well, let's kind of, you know, pull the belts tight, and let's run this one last time. I'm not sure. Uh, my future in Forza RC, my time's kind of limited. I work a full-time job. I run FRH as a team prize. Um, so my time to race itself, mm -hmm. other than just kind of for funds limited. Um, so I'm just going to give it everything I've got. And, you know, my goal was to make top 36. I did that. Anything beyond that, you know, being here, going to Mexico City in two weeks, like I said, is awesome. Aww. Really, really happy to have that opportunity. Yeah, well, we're glad you're on board for it. And uh, in talking to Sterilizer there about that event, he said, at least I didn't go off track. And for Revs, you know, he said that in the earlier uh, round earlier today, he wanted to focus a little bit on his uh, performance in the trophy truck and, and said he said it was better. It's not where he wanted to finish off. But, gentlemen, you have the final results. Tell us, uh, how, how did it shake down? Well, first of all, I, I'm still waiting for the NASCAR interview, right? I, I need the guy. Real loud, <laughs> monotone, real high. Yeah. Well, you know, we're running pretty good boom, out there. Boom, boom. <laughs> what, what do I do with my hands now? <laughs> Take a look at the final results here, race number two. No changes. So Rossi, Commando South, one, two, three, and they get the bonus points. Absolutely awesome for JSR. Really good results there after, I think, a really strong performance in race number one as well. So JSR looking pretty neat and tidy up here at the top of the points table. All right, let's take a look at how the teams are looking right now. 90. Does that forget say 95 points? Just forget it. You know? Does that say 95 <laughs> points? Beautiful. Beautiful. Look at that perfect two out of two for Rossi as well. To put two it wins, in, two yeah. fastest. To put it in perspective, Ali and I are only trailing TPR by 18 points. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Uh, you know, JSR looking incredible. TX3 stronger than this morning. Keep in mind that they had a real yeah, rough they, time in the MEA they, stream. They changed, they changed their lineup just a little bit. Billy Sue entered in, who's obviously uh, you know a, a tremendous racer. But remember, JSR had 90 points total on That's the right. European. So they've already increased that by five, and we still got another race to go. And TX3's painter is tied with TPR Apex right now. Uh, so uh, I guess Apex. They, they are leading us by one. That's right. They're both of those guys. Are <laughs> Team one point desk. Ahead of us. <laughs> Team desk. Right now, we, we're sitting on zero, but we're we're not too far back. <laughs> I like our chance to zero in round three as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, race number three here, uh, live from Seattle, and this is going to be a good one. This is the Sport GT where they have the opportunity to tune these things up a little bit. And, and here's a great example. You can see the advantages of putting extra bits on your car. You can tune the engine up, give it extra horsepower. You can widen the tires and give it stickier rubber. You can take weight off the car. This will actually, this tunes add a little bit of weight to the car. Not a very good tune. Uh, but you can take weight off the car as well by tuning it. And you can change the weight distribution to make it more equal with the center of the car. You kind of looked at me when you said put on a lot more weight. <laughs> yeah, that was a fat joke. You, yeah. you kind of, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not okay with that. <laughs> 
We'll talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go over to Kate, who's still hanging out. Yeah, I'm getting a really a good chance to feel out what this team is doing, especially with this tuning. Both Diablo and Sterilizer have a big part in the tuning for these cars. Any changes from EMEA, Sterilizer? And what, if so, what would you have done? Um, I didn't make any changes uh, to my car, personally. I thought the Viper felt really good in the, in the EMEA. Mm -hmm. um, I, I ran a really good pace, you know, the whole race, and I even saw a chemical, picked up my <laughs> tune and ran it. So, you know, maybe that means something good. So no changes here. How challenging is it for you to adapt as a driver, going from what you were driving earlier into now the same kind of race, but obviously a bit different as well? I love it. I love yeah. tuned cars. It's where I come from. It's my roots. Um, I'm not a very good, well, I'm, I wouldn't say that. I'm, I'm pretty good in stock cars, but I'm better in tuned cars. Sure. It's, it's just my roots and it's where I come from. So having this opportunity to run tuned cars is kind yeah. of a blessing for me. <laughs> and Revs, for you, the Porsche earlier, you know, we joked about the fact that you got the bonus points for the team. <laughs> you finished at that. That, yeah. was a, that was a good takeaway today for you. Uh, what kind of changes were made for you, if anything? And are yeah. you excited to get back in the Porsche? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we didn't make any changes to the car. Uh, it felt great. So, yeah, just going to go for it again, see what happens this time. Uh, I'm wondering, I am wondering if the guys saw the EMA, uh -huh. EA races and might have tuned their cars a little differently. But uh, we'll just see. I what think happens? we'll find out. You know, yeah. for you, Revs, I think it's an important thing to note that this second half of the season, too, it's been an interesting journey, if you will. Uh, this The season as a whole has been an interesting journey for you. Yeah. How do you feel that you are now with the confidence knowing that you are going to Mexico City and you are representing, but the points along here really do matter to get you to London? Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of pressure, but, yeah. I mean, I really do... I feel good going into Mexico. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to get practice, get practice going when yeah. I get home, and uh, I'm I'm gonna go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well I think we'll we'll see we'll see you be going for it here in Mexico City very soon. We know what's on the line to get you to London as well. Gentlemen, let's get back over to you and talk about what we have car wise for race number three. Still no NASCAR interview over there. I want it. Uh, the tunes are pretty good. No. Still can't get it. All right. They'll do it next time. Just keep holding out for that. All right. Here we go. It's time to figure out what these guys are in and where we're going to be here in race number three. Remember, they got an 80s car, a 90s car, and when it goes to the 90s, you're talking about the Viper. You're talking about the Aston Martin. And, of course, that Nissan Fair Lady Z, which was always a sweet ride. I like the Aston. I like it. It's surprise, really heavy. Surprise. It weighs like 4,000 pounds, <laughs> um, but it's got a massive V8 in it. It's, it's just it's just quite large and uh, and it goes it goes real fast. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I I feel like the Viper is going to be the choice here. You know, and from yeah, the 2000s, 100%. as we've been racing through the decades, it's either the Skyline or the Lotus. I was talking to uh, to F4H about why we didn't see any Skylines last time out. They're saying it's just a little bit difficult to get the power up there, to give it, give it, to give it enough juice on the straights. The S3 a little bit easier to get more power out of, both from 2002, uh, but that V8 in the S3 uh, with its twin turbo, giving a little bit more than the inline six in the Skyline. All right, so there's the cars. And now it's time to find out what where are they going to be? Yeah. You guys voted out there. I'm, I'm interested to find out if you don't pick Sebring. Gonna be upset again. You're gonna have a, a tantrum. I We're might. Gonna... I might. For some reason. Okay, sure. <laughs> it's just that day. Yes. It's just gonna be that kind Kudos of day. Kudos to you, community. Kudos <laughs> to you. Let's push him to the edge. <laughs> Here's the grid. Apex, Topher, Diablo, Dantastic, Revs, Lou, Mr. Mr. Jack, Serializer, Commando, South, Billy, Sue, and Rossi will be all the way in the back. It's a reverse grid so take the grid how it normally be flip it on its head and here we go at silverstone go 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 final race of the evening before we head down to mexico city just a few weeks from now and it's apex out in front in that porsche and it can really fly but i don't see that holding up through all seven laps Wow, As you can see, five wide into the heavy. Commando sideways. Commando sideways. Fantastic off the track. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Fantastic back on the track. 
He's now at the rear. He's going to be the caboose. Let's go the way he jump in the middle of the pack. There is Rossi, who's already moved up four positions in that Viper for JSR. He's had a tremendous day looking to add to it. A South and Sterilizer side by side, just right ahead of Rossi here in lap number one. Rossi's going to make that happen through oh, yeah. Brooklyn's and Luffield. Just super confident round the outside of Brooklyn's. He'll have the inside line for Luffield, powering it out, and now up towards Woodcut and the old start finish. Rossi with a beautiful move on Sterilizer. Lap one of seven here on Silverstone in Good Britain. Diablo in second, Revs in third. Mr. Jack, there you see him right there, the Viper riding along in fourth. He'll make slight work of Revs there as he moves into P3. Through Maggots and Beckett's for the first time, decelerating through these apexes. The slowest one is Beckett's, this right-hander, and he power onto the back straight. He's all the road. Revs is done a, doing a good job there. To move his car out across the track. You want to really accelerate so much that you, your car needs to use the whole road to accelerate through it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult corner. That's Diablo taking the lead of the race there from Apex, though. Well, if you missed the start of it or you just blink for a moment, the chaos in lap number one as all these guys got caught up in the carnage. Let's look at it one more time. Commando's going to go off. Dantastic's going to go on the side. Topher was in there. For some reason, I kind of felt I knew that Topher was in there. Look at the reactions from Rossi here, though. He's steering through the corner, turning right, turning right, sees the spin ahead, releases the steering, and moves around the outside of Commando, around the outside of Topher, and makes that line happen for himself clean through that mess. And that's how he picked up four spots just like that. Just like Days of Thunder, man. you got to drive through it. Aim for the smoke and keep your foot in it. <laughs> Lap number two, Scott Cole and Ali Tack along with you, a.k.a. Sparkles and Coltrane. <laughs> Boy, the JSR came through that collision clean. And in the reverse grid, they're still moving up. Commandos to furthest back in 10th. But once again, they're looking to add to it. I mean, I thought 90 here. points was a lot. I mean, they're going to go well over 100. They are going to absolutely dominate this, and good for them. Rossi sluicing through the pack into the top four now, and he's looking Eight at the spots. back of Revs, and that's a podium position for Rossi all the way from the back of the grid. He's now moved up. Boy, make it 11 spots. He's in fourth. So, boy, he's looking to the inside of Revs again. You can see them back there side by side now, and now Rossi will get it to stick. We're going to have to turn the, uh, turn the AI difficulty up for Rossi <laughs> here. He's making this look too and easy. Lou! No, Lou! Touched just a bit on Rossi, pushing him wide, but Rossi able to recover. As Lou got up in there for a moment, that puts JSR south into fifth. Revs in the middle of a JSR sandwich. Jelly, salad, and raisins. Sounds delicious. <laughs> what kind of bread are we using with that? Right. Right, Brad? Uh -huh. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Maybe some of my, I, mean, I need it to be a little bit of a marble rye. I, I need some texture there. I don't want to go seven grain, but marble rye I'm okay with. That's Boy, okay. this is the longest second lap in the history of Silverstone. Is that lap counter working? Somebody go up there and hit the corner. Coming back around, here we go. Getting close to the start and finish line once again as they'll go around club. Diablo out in front. Diablo with a uh, Back to the Future paint there on the Esprit. I like that a lot. It's got its uh, quantum flux capacitors. Or well whatever. over 88 <laughs> miles an hour at this point. That's right. Great Scott. And he's still in first. This is getting heavy with Mr. Jack right behind him. That's Rossi, though. Look how much he makes on the braking. This looks absolutely liquid out there on track, able to put that car exactly where he wants it. That tune is working for him. And I think that's the difference between Rossi and basically everyone else on track, that that car is just doing everything he wants it to do. He's already right up there, battling now for the lead. So you, you want to get a little real talk? Can, can we get Let's into get some in real there. talk? This is an exhibition, down. right? I mean, we obviously we're going to Someone's probably going to spin out while I'm asking you this, because that's what happens. <laughs> do you like homologated, or do you like do you like it tuned up? Tuning or no tuning in the Forza RC? I think that tuning is a very difficult thing to get right. A very difficult thing to get right. 
in an individual competition because tuning is a very social thing. You share it with your friends, you make your best tune, yeah. you share your tips. It's a very team-oriented activity. For team racing, I think tuning is great. For individual racing, I think tuning, yeah, it, it makes a little bit of a, a club, you know, a Maybe club of people who are going to share their tunes together and a club of people who don't I, get I could see that. I could, I, I, okay, and I'm with you on that. Maybe if one day if there's that, the, the team top and then open underneath. Sure. Maybe you maybe have tuning up top and homologated below. Lap three of seven. I do think it adds a little bit because, you know, you can tune and you, I'm not worried about the car being faster. Just some somebody might want to tune just a little bit of things so it as we keep going back to it, makes it more drivable, better for their skill set. 100%. And the fastest tune won't be the same for every driver. Absolutely. Some drivers will want more speed, and they'll build the engine up more, leave the tires a little bit thinner. Some drivers will want more grip on the mid-corner. They'll expand their tires or more acceleration. They'll give it big rear tires. Lots of different ways to build a car, lots of different ways to cut a cake. But in the end of the day, it all tastes delicious. Well, Rossi has powered his way now into second. And Diablo is all over, both him and JSR South. In the Lotus is another tip of the cap to the DeLorean. I mean, it's close. It looks close, doesn't it? I, I love South's moves here. Down, look, that over under from Diablo it might be open. It's not quite going to happen for him. Close defense and a good move from South. I love how many moves South is doing around the outside. He just sees the gap. He'll say, you know what, I'm just going to send it. I'm just going to give that a go. I'll put it around the outside and I'll see if it works out. And it's working for him. Beautiful moves from South. Lap four now. Here in race number three, the final race of the day. It's been all JSR. Can they continue their dominance here? And remember, Rossi started at the back of the pack in this reverse grid. And he's climbed all the way up into second place, currently running a 2.11 here around Silverstone. You compare that with Dantastic at a 2.18. That lets you know a little bit of the pace difference between the front of the pack and the back of the pack. Astonishing, astonishing. It all comes down to how Hooks Rossi looks in that Viper. It's just smooth one application of steering all the way through the corner open it up power down and we're onto the back straight it just looks it's just flowing through these corners mr jack kudos to him though doing a great job out front let's check in with kate who's hanging out on social well throughout the day south is south has had a big day on on social and on chat a couple of uh, one-liners from people south went south south on a mission two wheeling by tsr south how important is it for him now in this race tonight, this third race of our day tonight, also with the ones earlier today, how has that played a part to his successes, do you think? He's, he's doing a great job. He's hanging it out there. And this is this comes back to South being this driver who just takes every opportunity that he's given. He'll put it around the outside. Leave a space on the outside, he'll have it. Leave a space on the inside, he'll have that too. He's always there, always putting his cards on the table. Sometimes, and yeah, that's something we've not shamed Rossi with, but some of our concerns at times has been his aggressiveness. And maybe some of that from South is rubbing off on, on Rossi, but that also proves there's there's multiple ways to do it. I mean, you can be a smooth overtaker or you can be an aggressive overtaker. And I, I think that's two sides of the coin that you have in JSR Rossi and South. I completely agree. Sterilizer moving into fourth, showing off his red, white, and blue here in Lap five of seven. Mr. Jack riding along in first place here for TX3, but he's got Rossi right behind him. Viper on Viper. And this is the race earlier that we had. Zermatt was in the Lotus and he ran away. Disappeared, Zermatt off up the road. So again, the TPR roster for the NA stream, maybe not holding up to their EMEA teammates not able to fill those big shoes that they left behind. TPR looking a little bit weaker now uh, with Lou in sixth and uh, yeah Apex all the way back in 11th. Fantastic in ninth. Yeah. Tremendous mobile one literally there. Out of Sterilizer he's trying to catch up with South. He's got his teammate Diablo right behind him. Lou still riding along in sixth place. So a good battle in the middle of the pack as well there in fourth, fifth and sixth. 
Trying to see who that is riding along in seventh. That's Billy Sue with the revs right behind him. There's Billy. On board with him, that lovely orange Lotus Esprit. It's the same, actually, the same color that, uh, that Zermatt ran. I remember looking at it thinking how great it looks. Fantastic, uh, fantastic vintage orange. I would be very surprised if he doesn't go by Lou here. Pressuring a little bit, last sector of the track. It's all about powering down through this last corner. You've got to carry all the speed you can. You can see Lou lighting up the rear tires there. The exit of that corner onto lap number six, into turn one, it's a dab on the brakes. No downshift to most of these drivers. Push through, keep the acceleration, the revs high. Don't bog down through turn two, and it's there an it open goes. gap. Mm. To the inside it goes Billy Sue and he'll be able to make that stick and he'll stick his sights now on Diablo. Il Diablo. Is that what we'll call it? Where did that come from? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a sound effect. Third commentator, I think. Yeah. <laughs> sort of sort of blacked out there for a moment. Sorry about that. Is Laps Brian here? <laughs> is Brian here? So yeah, where is Megburn? <laughs> Lap six of seven. Here for Sterilizer. That's right, it's a great livery, isn't it? It looks like a little bit of a tribute. Is that the old GTLM Viper livery uh, that he's running there? Maybe The I'm, old number 53. Yeah, maybe I'm mistaken, but uh, could be. A little bit over a lap to go. Mr. Jack really doing a nice job in that clean air. You know, you thought at some point Rossi was just on a mission. Started this race in 12th at the back of the pack. Had some help along the way, certainly. But boy, has he looked strong in that 1999 Viper. I don't know if you ever driven one of those, man. That the, the parking brake on that thing is like the size of a softball. <laughs> it's absolutely huge. I got in it, sat in it, because I was, you know, obviously I was looking at cars. Ended up going with the with an 03 vet, but I, I was like, this the, no, no, th th this is huge. I would alter the thunder thighs. A little bit, yeah, a little bit less common than a vet, maybe the Viper, but yeah, as you say, a little bit of a sort of unwieldy car, it looks like, as well. Yeah, a lot of maybe power. A, maybe good reason for that. Diablo in fifth, looking back at Billy Sue. Billy Sue setting the sights, looking to the inside. And Diablo hold him off. Battle of the Esprits here. F4H's Esprit versus the TX3 one. Driven by Billy Sue. He's through turn one, and Billy Sue's line's a little bit sweeter. He's been able to come in, accelerate through turn two a little bit more powerfully. That gap opening up with Diablo on the defense into turn three. This might be Billy Sue's chance here as we tumble down towards the hairpin of turn four. Nice job by Diablo closing the door for a moment. Billy Sue losing some momentum there as the back end slid out just a hair. All it takes is such tiny, tiny changes, tiny corrections in the direction of the car, which ultimately affects your pace. Billy Sue not looking like he's got enough of a difference here to make a very assertive move on Diablo. He needs Diablo to make a mistake. Rossi currently running a sub 210. We've got to get on board with Rossi. We've here got to at see Silverstone. This Throw, is me Throw me up Come top. Throw me up top. Come on, let's guys. go. Let's go. This is Mr. Jack running the lead of this race. Rossi just half a second behind him, and the two of them neck and neck for the last few laps. Rossi, this is his last chance now of making it three for three. Three wins in the team event in the NA stream. Unbelievable performance it could be from him if he can just catch up to that car. He's five tenths behind Mr. Jack in the final lap here on Silverstone. Viper on Viper. Who's got the sting? Feel that power down to this back straight. That Viper putting its 460 horsepower onto the asphalt. Mr. Jack's got it as well, or he's got just as much under its hood. Less than 100 feet separating these two Titans. You go into the last chicane, all about getting your braking right. Mr. Jack, not, so, not as confident as Rossi. You can see the gap diminishing. It's going to extend again as the car's Constantina closer under braking, accelerate away. It looks like Mr. Jack's got this. And he will hold on through club. And he provisionally will hold on to that first place. Sterilizer coming across as well, Diablo. But JSR, two in the top. 
Ooh. Seven, seven, and one of the most unbelievable laps that we have seen. I know he finished second from Rossi. Uh, sir, record your replay because <laughs> I would like to yeah. wake up and be inspired every morning <laughs> on that incredible uh, lap around Silverstone. I, I had our producer in, our, in my ear. He's having kittens back there because Rossi <laughs> just set the world record for that type of car out there on Silverstone. I'm not sure if the lap was clean or not. I'm not sure if it's going to be up there on the leaderboard. He may have drafted a little bit, which would dirty it up. But the fastest lap we've ever seen around Silverstone in that class of car put down by Rossi. Yeah, for that division, wow. And you finished second. And you, yeah, and you finished second. <laughs> but you started 12th. And then to put it in perspective, it. <laughs> only seven laps. You started 12th, and pretty much you were in second by lap four. Unbelievable, wasn't it? And I thought he was going to close up that gap. He looked so dominant. I think given infinite laps, I say this all the time, given infinite laps, he might have had Mr. Jack. But these races are a length for a reason, and Mr. Jack managed to hold it off. Yeah, we could add a few more laps to it. I keep pushing <laughs> for it. You guys hear me back there. A few more laps around Silverstone. I can't believe I just said that. That came out of my mouth. Take a look at the replay here. <laughs> Final race of the day. And it was a good one here in this Sport GT icon. And my, oh, my, Rossi was a sight to behold. Just plowing through the pack, wasn't he? You can see him, that little attack from Lou is uh, through wow. the old first corner. He ran wide after the tap, but uh, didn't let that unsettle him. And this was Sal's great move round the outside of Diablo through turns three and four. Rossi was in third halfway through the second lap. Unbelievable. From 12th to third. And you continue to move up the track. This is a tremendous move by Billy Sue. And throw it to the inside on Lou and make it stick. They're in lap six. But Mr. Jack somehow able to hold off the charging Rossi. And that's all about getting out there in that clean air. And he had so much space. But every lap, another 30, 20 feet would come off, come off. And he was closing in, closing in, closing in, but able to hold on there at the end. He held on. He held on. And I love to see that. It's probably the last time we're going to see Mr. Jack uh, in the 2018 Forza Racing Championship. So a great way for him to finish his year. I'm super happy for him. Uh, he's been around in the top level of Forza Racing for a very long time. And, uh, yeah, we're going to miss him in the LAN events. But fantastic performance from him here at his last, uh, his last show. No doubt a name we'll be hearing next year uh, with TX3 Mr. Jack and a nice way to finish off his uh, 2018, as you mentioned. Yeah, absolutely right. JSR, though. JSR. How well are they done? It's not a delicious sandwich, but it's an amazing racing group. That's for sure. Let's take a look at the provisional results here of the final race of the day. And you can see Mr. Jack, Rossi, South, 1, 2, 3, Sterilizer, Diablo, Billy Sue in there in the middle of the pack. And, of course, Topher, he was there. He did a thing. He yeah. was out there. Topher, you know, he was out. He's making up the numbers a little bit, wasn't he? Uh, not quite able to compete at this level. At the same maybe can be said for Apex from TPR as well. Both drivers, if they want to be competing at this top, top level, might need to put a little bit more practice in, uh, really sweat out those lap times a little but bit more. That's the difference in being a, uh, running a 209 and running a 212. Right, exactly. That's all it is. That's what it's not. It's not huge amounts of time. It's it's three seconds, two seconds of the pace. Uh, and that's what, that's what it comes down to, you know? So if you're out there on the leaderboard, if you're setting leaderboard times in the Forza Racing Championship and you're like, hey, I'm two seconds off, that's not too bad. Well, this is what that looks like on track. Let's go ahead and head over one more time to Kate, who's standing by with F4H. <laughs> <laughs> well, just having a little discussions about that race. Uh, race number three, interesting race, guys. Uh, sterilizer, nice job, well done. That was a track earlier you said you, run, you ran pretty quick. Looking at Rossi's uh, time there, what's your takeaway? Uh, man, Rossi is Rossi's a really quick driver, and uh, he did a 2.094, and it was the fastest lap they'd ever seen there, and I was only a few tenths off, so I'm content with that. Um, pretty solid performance in the NA broadcast today, so I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I feel like that was a definitely an improvement. We saw that first race for you in the EMEA. You came out strong here in Seattle, and then I had to work through a few, but welcome back. Full circle for you. Congrats on that one. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I think it's interesting that uh, each of these guys have their own individual thoughts and feelings. You know, Revs, for you, 
What did you learn today? Uh, that I can drive tuned cars pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, uh, I'm more, I drive better with stock cars. Yeah. So the FRC plays into my hand, but with the tuned cars, uh, I've seemed to struggle a little bit before. Yeah. But um, again, I finish uh, in front of all the other Porsches, so. Yeah. Um, I was expecting Commando to be a threat. Really? And okay. uh, I was kind of surprised not to see him around. I don't know what happened. He must have had some trouble yeah. in the back. Yeah. Well, what, uh, are, what do you think JSR is doing here a little differently today? What do they have on you? Mm, what do they have on, on uh, F4H at this point? They're pretty quick. Yeah. That's a, a fast group of people. Uh, South and Commando. Um, R Rossi. I mean, those guys, they're, they're very quick. They're always yeah. going to be there. Yeah. Uh, fighting for a win. Well, going into Mexico City, 25th, as, as we've talked about, how nervous does that make you knowing that JSR has shown up here to our, our team um, exhibition? Well, like I said, stock cars will mm -hmm. be driven in Mexico. Yeah. So <laughs> True. I, it's going to be a level playing field. And, yeah, I, I, I feel good about it. Yeah. So on chat, someone said, I think it was Harmonic who was giving you a hard time. Basically, uh, you're talking <laughs> surprise. Like Diablo was like, yeah, surprise. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But uh, you were talking about Pump. practice and how you're looking forward to go practice. And he's like, Paul, what do, what do we do with old Paul, basically? Is, 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 what happened to the old Paul? He wants to go practice? <laughs> What's that about? Well, uh, for this season, uh, Series 2 especially, I, was, I would only practice right before the races, mm. the day before the races. So, um, yeah, I stuck to that. I didn't want to get burnt out. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to just get in some laps, and then be ready for the next day. And that's that's all I did for this season. It actually, it worked out really well for me. I performed a lot better. Uh, the rivals went really well for me yeah. in Series 2. Um, yeah, so I'm going to stick to that. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> you know, one day do the first round, another day do the second round. Yeah. And, yeah, just go from there. Practice pays off. Perfect practice yeah. pays off even more, but practice definitely it pays off. Well, big announcement happened today, and I know in this community it's, it's even bigger. Forza Horizon 4, the demo was released. You can get it on the Windows, at the Windows Store. Make sure you download it. Revs, this is something that you said was going to be really cool. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's, I mean, you know, it's always fun to jump on a Horizon game and just blast around with the uh, McLaren Senna. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty exciting. So, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Day well, one. Uh, well, of course, the, re the release will be, uh, will be released actually in the end of September. We look forward to that. And of course, the early access is September 28th and it comes out worldwide October 2nd. We look forward to seeing that. But right now, here's a sneak peek at what the demo is all about. Whenever you're ready. Ready? We'll get it in one take. Okay. Great Britain, land of dazzling beauty and extraordinary diversity. Season after season, changes arrive as spring rains nourish. Oh my, oh, those, those magnificent blossoms. Sir, please, uh, just stick to the script. Nature's curiosity is powerful, savage. Good heavens, what is that? It's a, it's a hovercraft. Why? I didn't make the game. She stalks her prey. And the hunt is on. Says the big cat. Must I voice all of these? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Summer at the watering hole. Even hooligans join the fray. It's, uh, it's hoonigans. Hoonigans. Hoonigan. What is this language? It's hoon. It's, it's English. Winter. Wait. Spring? The migration moves forth together. A true multiplier. Oh, no, no. Uh, it's actually multiplayer. It's, uh, it's a type of the game where you can play with multiple players. It's like a shared world. Multiplier. There you go. There you go. You got it. Every creature soars over the greatest Britain ever. Four changes everything.
Okay. Get the ultimate edition and play four days early. Well, fall doesn't just change everything. Seasons change everything. I've had an opportunity to already play this already before it dropped today. Uh, and I was glad because I've been super jealous <laughs> of those out there. You can download the demo right now on the Xbox store. Uh, but, you know, we've had so much fun through the first three horizons with so many different areas and landscape. But now you have the opportunity with the seasons to really challenge yourself in an open world through so many different types of weather. You can. And it changes the way that you interact with uh, the, the landscape around you. The car is going to apply its power a little bit more differently in snow as it might on a nice warm summer's day. I can't wait to take you on a road trip from, uh, let's say, Braintree to Slough <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> Hard pass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look at those final results of race number three. Mr. Jack with those 22 points, Rossi with 15, South with 14, and JSR once again just continue to dominate and a tip of the cap to Topher out there at the very bottom, but 126 Boom. points by JSR. They almost doubled up TX3. Yeah, JSR right now, they're just saying, you guys have got to get good because we're up here. We're at this level. We're here already. You guys have got to catch up. 59 points for Rossi, just 10 behind TX3 uh, with Mr. Jack and Billy Sue. Of course, you know, they tip the, you know, they, they appreciate Topher, all he does for their team. They gave him a shot to be out there, but uh, obviously they're just a little bit short on the points. I don't think it would have mattered. You could have gave them. Yeah, they could, could have doubled their points and only just beaten <laughs> So, you right. know, that, that, was a ab that was a really dominant performance. And I loved watching it. I loved every second of it. I love to see Rossi out there enjoying his time on the track. And you can sometimes see him struggle. It's a little bit sad, but when he does well, it's, it's beautiful to watch. Well, now it's time to put our game face on here, guys, because... It is time for us to lock in on the playoffs down in Mexico City. And here is the roster of the 36 drivers that you'll see down there. Of course, not hard BR anymore. He's known as Zoom. He's going to be in that group one along with Force One Roadrunner. Those are the top three in that. But watch out for some of the dark horses we have in this. Have Revs here, Billy Sue. That group one looks pretty tough. Revs and Billy Sue in group one together. Those two are fighting for 24th and 25th position globally. That's the cutoff for London. Whichever one of those drivers beats the other at Mexico will move forward to London. All right, a lot of at stage, you're looking at group two here, Lightning, of course, him and his family, and, and Topher as well, over there in the Virginias and Carolinas, thinking of them with the hurricane working their way, but he's in group two. He'll be okay down in Mexico City. We can't wait to see him along with Mitch, Wesley, and I can't leave Rossi out because Mitch and Rossi, that is the showdown in group two. It is a huge showdown. Mitch and Rossi have been just at each other all year long. Used to be teammates. Mitch jumps over to Williams. He's starting to look dominant, and there's a lot of people saying this is Mitch's playoff. And your dark horse might be JSR South. I mean, this is a guy that's building some confidence that it proves he can throw it on you at any time. Of course, luck always plays a big factor. Group three here, Box, Venom, Lage, and Seven. But Box and Lage in the same group, and that's because Lage didn't race in that first week. Remember, France won the World Cup. He wasn't around, was able to power his way up into the third spot of that group three, but that is that's almost three of the hev most heaviest hitters we have in the entire uh, FRC. Looking further down that field, I love THR Knee as well. Yeah. Somebody who didn't make it to our previous playoff, could had trouble getting there, but now he's going to be able to make it to Mexico. I'm super he, excited. One of the fastest drivers in Oceanic. New Zealand? Yeah. Coming out of Australia, I think. Australia. I believe so. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying it's the same because it's not the same. I, don't, don't, don't quote me as that. Uh, I think your words were. Uh. <laughs> uh, of course, we're going to be down in Mexico City. It's, it's going to be a great time. And in, it's all about these stages here. The group stage will be on Friday. You'll have those 36 drivers. Of course, we start our broadcast Saturday the 29th at 1 p.m. Central Time down in Mexico City. We'll already be bringing you up to date of down to those 24 drivers and then the top six from each of those groups in the semifinals will advance to the finals on Sunday 1 p.m. 
12 drivers fighting for 75 grand. Cannot wait. It's just the most tense atmosphere, the most, the best racing in the Forza Racing Championship. It's an electric place to be. Tune in there for sure. And we also will have a promo show for you guys on the 26th, just bringing you all the way up to date on uh, what the drivers have been doing down in Mexico City. Of course, what Kate, yourself, and I are doing down there, hanging out with tacos that we've been packing away. Uh, so that'll be a fun show. We'll have some racing as well. I know sometimes when we say recap show or promo show, you're like, well, it's just these yokels are going to be talking. <laughs> uh, no, when we are live, we are going to be racing. We are, we are, exactly. I, I can't wait, I can't wait. It's going to be a fun trip down to, uh, down to Mexico, get some good food, but get some even better racing. Well, we've had some incredible times here in Series 2 for the whole crew that's out there. We'll see you guys down in Mexico City. We just really appreciate you guys up here in Seattle for the entire crew up here that's been rocking with us for all 2018. Big shout-outs to them. And, of course, our sponsors at Play Seat and Plantronics Rigs. Appreciate you guys. Everybody out in the community, stay safe. And we'll see you next time in F4H. Appreciate those guys making the trip out here and being with us today. Godspeed, God bless. We'll see you on the other side.